I'm sure you've been in this hot mess just like me. Inspiration has struck, you've jumped into Studio One, you've recorded a few quick tracks, and you didn't really bother with naming as you went along, did you? And now you can't tell what anything is because the default naming was you. So for example, with these two tracks at the top here, they're both called Presence because I used the Presence instrument to create them. And not only that, but all of their events are also called Presence. By the time I recorded my fourth track, which was an audio track, it was automatically named Track 4. Its events were also also called track four with the take numbers in brackets. And now you've got the most boring job in Studio One, which is renaming all of these elements. And the most boring way you can do that is to right click on an event, for example, go down to event and then go to rename events. Please don't do that. If you want to rename just an individual event, right click on it and then just double click on its name right next to your mouse there and you can quickly rename it like that. However, that's not the tip I want to give you. I want to be able to kind of batch rename things for each track. So let's use our fourth track as an example. It was actually a vocal track. So what I'm going to do is double click on the track name here, type in vocal like so. But before I hit enter, I'm going to hold down my shift key, then hit enter. And you'll see that not only is the track renamed, but all of the events are renamed accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and rename all of my other tracks now. That was the first of four shortcuts I have for you today to improve your workflow in Studio One. Now, before we move on to the next one, I'd just like to say this video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. The next thing I'd like to do in my project is to create some duplicates of the little drum event that I've created here. So the first thing I'll do is select the actual event and then I'll press D on my keyboard to make the duplicates. Let's do that two or three times. And immediately I can see a problem. Because the first event that I duplicated was not a full bar length, and it's created the duplicates back to back, that means the beginning position of each of these drum events actually is starting in the wrong place musically. So let's undo that, and I'll show you how to do it correctly. So in order to do this correctly, the first thing you need to do is make sure you're snapping to the grid. So I'll press N to make sure of that. Then I'll press D on my keyboard again. And you can see that those drum parts are now intelligently being placed at the beginning of each bar. Now, why do I say intelligently? Well, it will behave differently depending on the length of your original event. So I'll undo this again and I'll make my event say a little less than half a bar long. And now when I press D on my keyboard, you can see that it creates the next duplicate starting at the next half of a bar. Pretty clever. Now let's undo all of that again and I'm going to show you how to create ghost events. So this time I'm going to press D, but I'm going to hold shift as I do it. And that creates a duplicate. And we can see a little sort of ghost icon has appeared on the bottom left. I'll make another couple here. And the relevance of this is that they're now linked. So if I go in and edit the first one, for example, and then grab this drum here and move it to a different position, you will see that all of the duplicates have also changed to mirror that change I just made in that one. This time I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing the same thing and you can decide which one you prefer. What I actually wanna do is make a copy of this vocal event on the empty track down below, but I wanna make sure it starts in exactly the same place. Now, if you look at the beginning of this event, you can see that it's neither here nor there, kind of in no man's land and it's certainly not snapped to any of the grid lines we can see here. So this could be interesting. So with the first method, I'm gonna start off by selecting the event itself. And then on Windows, the copy it, I'm gonna hold Control C. On Mac, that would be Command C. So I've done that and I've made that copy. Now I'm gonna select the track that I want to copy it to. That's the one below. And rather than use the usual keyboard shortcut to paste, instead on Windows, I'm gonna hold Shift Control V. On Mac, that would be Shift Command V. And then that's actually gonna copy it 
in exactly the same position on the new track. So that's our first method. Let's undo that. With the next method, I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard in Windows. That would be Option on Mac. And then I'm just going to drag the event down. And you can see, even though I'm using, moving my mouse around, the event is kind of snapped to the position that the original clip was in. Now, if I move it around a long way, then it will start to move. But as I get closer to that event, it snaps to it. And that's how, with this method, you make sure it's in the same position. Another useful feature when you want to move events that don't begin exactly on a grid line and you want to maintain that relationship is the nudge by grid feature. So with this, what I'm going to do is select that same vocal event again, which has that beginning just before a bar line. And this time I'm going to hold Alt in Windows. That would be Option on Mac. And then I'm just going to use my my left and right arrow keys to move it around. And as I do that, you can see that its relationship with the grid has been maintained. So let's undo that and do the same thing, but this time on the piano roll view. So I'm going to go up to my piano part here, double click on it and open this view. And you can see that most of the notes are not actually on the grid line. So if I wanted to grab some of them and move them around, but maintain their relationship with the grid, again, I'll hold Alt on Windows or that would be option on Mac and then left and right to move them around and they maintain that relationship with the grid. Now before we move on to our final shortcut, don't forget if you're releasing your music to places like Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, etc, follow the link in the description down below to our sponsor DistroKid. If you do follow that VIP link, you'll get 7% off of your first year of membership. One nice way of extending your selection by a event is to start off by selecting your event then hold shift on your keyboard and for example in this case I'll press the right arrow key to extend my selection by event to the right or I could of course do it to the left I could do it upwards and also downwards as well and once I've got a couple of events selected well I might want to do something like press G on the keyboard to merge those events together or maybe I'd want to press control B for bounce and what that will do is create a new track. It will bounce whatever audio was being created by that instrument track to the track there below and it'll also mute the original instrument track there. You got a couple of bonus tips. Here's a weird thing. People keep telling me they feel like this channel deserves more subscribers. Well, that's something that you're in a position to change, assuming you haven't already subscribed. So do me a favor, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below to say, hey, Mike, you just earned a new sub. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you in the next video. My name is Mike. I hope you're well. I said all that in the wrong order. You'd think I'd know by now, wouldn't you? <laughs>